Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here and welcome to a very chilly Saturday evening. It's been sleeting for the last couple of days and the temperature has not gone above freezing. So yeah, I think I'm not going to go anywhere today or tomorrow. But in this video, I'm going to try to cover some of the lingo that we use. In other words, some of the terminology that we use in the printing world especially for photo printers. Now, this will help you get your point across a lot easier if you are asking someone for help with a printing problem. If you know what the terminology is, they will then be able to understand what it is that you are asking. It's very important. But anyway, let's go ahead and begin. Driver. Now, what is a driver? Driver is a software that you install on your computer that will then act like a conductor. It will operate your printer. It will take the information from your editing application, we're talking about images here, or text or anything you're going to print, the information from your computer, it goes through the driver and the driver that transmits it via USB or Wi-Fi or network cable to the printer. And the printer will then go ahead and produce that print. In this case, this is a perch sheet from QImage. Firmware. Firmware actually works for cameras, for anything in the digital electronic world, such as video cameras, still cameras, printers, in this case, printers. Firmware is the software that lives internally in your printer or your camera, okay? So that basically is not relying on the driver, but that firmware sets certain parameters or operation parameters for that particular instrument. And of course, whenever there is a problem that gets reported to the company that controls, in this case, Canon, they will then solve it by introducing a firmware update, okay? No problem updating your firmware if you are only using original consumables. If you are refilling, however, that may cause a problem where your cartridges that you may have reset or use single-use chips are no longer recognized. But anyway, firmware controls your printer internally, okay? Cart or cartridge, well, that's basically the ink cartridges. And in this particular case, they live in this compartment right here, as you can see. So that's when we say cart, it means a cartridge. It's a container that holds ink, okay? OEM, what is OEM? Original Manufacturer's Equipment. So when we speak of OEM ink, we are referring to the original expensive ink, the highest quality ink you will ever be able to feed through your printer, that is OEM. That's what we refer to it as. That little acronym OEM, that is always going to mean original, whether it is ink or cartridges. Chip, well, let's go back in here and pop one of these cartridges out. We'll take the yellow one out. The cartridge relies on a chip and the chip is right there, right in here. As you can see, that chip is an electronic little smart device that sends information to the printer so that it recognizes it as yellow and also comes preloaded from the get-go to indicate a full level of ink. And as the printer utilizes ink, as you are printing, it will then rewrite that level, basically lowering it, as it needs to according to the calculations that it internally makes. And that way, when you reach a certain level, it reaches empty, and at that point, you switch your cartridge. So the chip is required to be able to actually run any of those ink cartridges. A chip resetter. I'm sorry, I don't have an example. Well, wait, wait a minute, here I do. I do have some examples here. I'll just pull one randomly here. This resetter basically will be able to reset some, not all of them, of the T58 cartridges that the 3800 and the 3880 from Epson uses. So chip resetters 
reset the ink level coating so that it is set to the original full condition. And then you can go ahead and continue printing after you have, of course, refilled that cartridge. So then you are able to begin at a full level. Just like when you put gas in your tank, you want that gauge to show that the tank is now full. So that's what the resetter does. Cleaning cycle. When I say cleaning cycle, basically what that means is that at some point, whether you have to perform it because you have some sort of clocks, meaning maybe you didn't use your printer for two months and you start printing and you see bands, you see some erratic printing. In other words, you don't have continual printing. That means that some of those nozzles, there are several thousand of them in that printhead, may be clogged due to maybe dry ink internally, or you have air in those lines, especially something like this stationary cartridge printer. They utilize ink lines. You could have air in those lines for whatever the reason. And so air doesn't print, you will have gaps. So you will have to run a cleaning cycle. And some of the Canon printers will run automatic cleaning cycles as needed. When the printer senses that it needs to, this one does that. Pro 10, Pro 100, Pro 1, maybe not. Maybe those are a little bit more on a schedule type system. But nevertheless, they will run those cleaning cycles. And what's actually taking place is that the printhead gets parked over that perch unit. And that's always universally located on the right side of the printer chassis. The nozzle plate underneath that printhead will attach to the perch unit. There is a gasket that will seal against it. And underneath that, there is a pump that will create a vacuum. And then ink is then sucked out of the printhead, basically physically. And that should clear out any kind of clogs that you should be experiencing. Either because of environmental conditions, maybe you're, you live in the desert and it's very, very low humidity and you didn't print for a week, you may end up with slightly dried nozzles and those nozzles need to be purged by sucking ink directly through the printhead via that vacuum system. So it's not a mechanical pressurized system. Ink is not being forced through, it is being sucked out, okay? Now, one very critical thing, if the Cleaning cycles seem like they are not really effective. It could be that that gasket is no longer sealing against that printhead nozzle plate. And what you gotta do every few months, depending on your frequency of printing, take a long Q-tip, you can buy those on Amazon, and then use alcohol, distilled water, anything that's just water-based, and clean that peripheral gasket. Make sure there's no encrustation of ink because that will not allow that gasket to seal and you will lose vacuum. In other words, the negative pressure you're generating will leak out and the cleaning cycle basically does nothing. So that clog will never be relieved because ink is actually not being sucked out due to that leaky connection between the nozzle plate and the purge unit. Very important. Nozzle check. The nozzle check basically indicates whether any, any, and I mean any nozzle is not firing. Now, often people refer to a complete channel as a nozzle, and it is not, obviously not. A channel is composed of maybe several hundred nozzles, okay, each color channel. So please don't call that channel, my yellow nozzle is not firing. Well, are you talking about one single nozzle? or the 300 and whatever nozzles that channel has. It depends on the printhead, the actual number, right? So always use channel and not nozzle. Nozzle is just one little tiny orifice out of many, 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 many little tiny holes where the ink is ejected from or through. So the nozzle check, basically what it will do, it will then show you, say for instance, you are printing and your color is a little bit off and you start seeing kind of a streaky look to your printed image. Stop printing. Don't print anymore hoping that will clear it up. Okay. Don't do that, especially on a Canon printer. Immediately run an also check followed by a cleaning cycle. If you see any gaps on those bands, then you will have to run a cleaning cycle and then run another nozzle check to determine whether that has cleared the problem or not. 
quite often. If it's something that maybe took three to four or five months to develop, that's your fault, right? Let the printer sit after that cleaning cycle. Let it sit. Come back hours later and run that nozzle check. You should see an improvement. It may take several cleaning cycles to clear those clogs that have developed during that time. Print head or head alignment. Well, what does that mean? When you see banding and you run a nozzle check and every nozzle is firing, then the banding is not due to clogs. It's due to a misaligned print head. What does that mean in layman's English? Well, it means that, let me just paint it this way. If you lay down a half inch wide swath of ink, in other words, image across, and the paper advances a little bit less or a little bit more than half an inch, you will either have a gap between the first pass and the second pass or an overlap, okay? You will know it's banding because that gap or overlap, basically it'll be a little darker line, will always be exactly the same distance apart, okay? Whereas head strikes, meaning that the head is actually scratching the paper, that happens randomly, okay? It will not be exactly a quarter of an inch apart or half an inch apart. When that happens, you need to then run a head alignment. And the best paper to use for that is just some cheap, glossy paper. Do not use expensive paper. Do not use plain paper because the printers that have auto head alignment rely on how accurately the internal sensors can read the results of that print head alignment set of patches, okay? I'm not gonna go over the structure of these patches, but the sensor will determine whether you need an adjustment here or there, okay? And the only way that it sees it really, really clearly to be able to do a really, really good job is to use glossy paper. This kind of paper will cause ink wicking and that will hide any defects that may have been there. They cannot be detected. The sensor will think everything is good and nothing gets solved, okay? You need to use glossy paper. Finish it, and once it is done, it will tell you it was successful. Then proceed to print, and please print at a higher quality level so that you have more overlapping per pass instead of having a half-inch pass. Of course, we love to have our prints emerging quickly, but often if you have a slight head alignment problem, you will see the banding immediately show up. Whereas even without doing a head alignment, if you just use a high quality, you may not even notice it, okay? Because it will make maybe eighth of an inch advances and it will be laying ink many, many times over the already laid ink. In other words, it's dithering all of those areas and you will hide that particular little gap or overlap that you may have had. Platen. The platen is that metallic strip that you see all the way across. It has a bunch of little rollers and that helps hold that paper down as the paper is advancing forward so that you can print on it, okay? So that's the platen. Now, the platen can be adjusted for gap. In other words, it will actually raise the print head slightly higher as needed for thicker papers, okay? In some cases, to avoid possible abrasion that may be occurring. If you have a very highly textured paper, some of those little bumps may actually hit the printhead. So that is adjusted by raising or lowering the plate, and that is something you adjust usually in the driver itself. Borderless printing. Well, that began, okay, let me, let me take you back to the darkroom days. In the darkroom, we had an easel that always added a border. We used to have some vacuum easels for if you wanted to print something borderless, you enlarge that image beyond the edges and you had a borderless print after you develop it. Well, when the quick labs in these drugstores and camera shops became very popular, these one hour labs, they were loaded with four inch wide rolls of paper. And so that created four by six prints out of your 35 millimeter film, that was borderless and people love that. So when inkjet printers for photography became available, people started demanding borderless printing. 
For that, the driver has to enlarge that image so that it actually extends beyond the edges of that particular paper. And that particular paper size better be one of the standard sizes found in your drop-down menu for sizes, okay? What it does, it will extend the size of the images and it will print beyond the edges. Where does that ink go? Well, it goes on those little sponges that live right underneath the platen. Okay, and that eventually, after a lot of borderless printing, it becomes kind of gummy, and that could actually add some artifacts to your prints, meaning smears, smudges, and the like. So for me, I just stay away from borderless printing. If I want something borderless, I will size it correctly and print it on a larger sheet of paper, go to my rotor trimmer, and trim it down perfectly so I don't lose any of my image due to expansion. If you try to do the minimal expansion, because printers do not position the paper exactly perfectly in the same spot every single time, you may end up with a slight white sliver of a border randomly every once in a while, okay? So keep that in mind. You have to have enough expansion to take into account any error positioning of that paper. And that happens all the time, okay? Keep that in mind. All right, so we discussed the perch and parking station. Like I said, that is where the print head will rest and also where it will perform the cleaning cycles. It attaches very quietly. You will have vacuum being activated. A certain amount of ink will be sucked out of it. The print head will lift up, will move slightly to the left. You will hear that whirling action of the pump. That's the noise you hear. That's not actually when it's removing ink or sucking ink out of the printhead. That is removing the ink that has collected on that perch unit ceramic porous sponge, as they call it. It drains through the pump and it gets collected into your waste ink cartridge. Or in the case of printers that have cartridges that write on the printhead, it goes into the internal ink pads. And when those become full, in other words, fully saturated, the printer will stop working. You'll have to have a service perch pump that lives underneath the perch unit or the parking station and it's one of those peristaltic type pumps it rotates mm, 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 like that and so it is a very efficient way to create vacuum and to also drain that perch unit in case there's any buildup of ink okay these printers will do that prior to any print job to make sure there's nothing sitting on that perch unit because if there is a puddle of ink it will be easily picked up by the nozzle plate and then smeared all over your prints well, we don't want that to happen, correct? So when you hear that noise, it's not really performing another cleaning cycle. I know, horrors, right? No, it's actually draining that perch unit of any buildup it may have, whether it has it or not, okay? So that's a good thing. ICC or ICM Media Profile. Well, those are the profiles that we use. And what does a profile do? It basically takes the millions of colors that your image may contain, colors, hues, density levels, and tells a printer with only basically 11 colors per chroma optimizer, or in the case of a PA-100, nine colors. Basically, you're using eight because you have two blacks. Very limited color palette. Some printers only have six. And it tells it how to mix those very limited sets of colors, okay, to be able to reproduce accurately over 16 and a half million colors that your image may contain. That's, that's what it's doing. So the ICC profile orchestrates the mixing of the limited color palette you have to be able to give you something that looks like it contains millions of colors, such as this, okay? So that's what the ICC profile does. And you have to create one for every single media type. And the reason for that is the paper base has a lot to do with how the final colors will appear to the human eye. There are paper bases that are a little bit warm. They range in tone from warm to cool to neutral. Maybe they have OBAs, optical brightening agents. Maybe they do not. So each paper type with its 
Custom coding requires a custom profile so that it outputs as close to identical as possible. It's never going to be 100%, but you want it to be as close. So if I take, for example, some luster paper and then some other paper such as a burrito paper, I want that standard image to be printed as identical as possible, okay? And for that, I would need a profile for each paper type. Pizza wheels. What the heck are those? Well, they're little tiny star wheels, and they are used in the transport mechanism by the platen to help advance the paper forward. On some types of paper, like very delicate burrito papers, barium sulfate coated papers, they will leave marks, and they will leave marks especially on the dark regions. On RC coated papers or resin coated papers, no problem. But burrito papers are extremely delicate. So some printers will have a problem. They will leave little tracks of little pinpoints across your image. Yeah, horrible, isn't it? But true, it happens. And it may happen on a particular model more than another model. You can adjust the gap. Maybe that will help. Maybe it will not. But those silly little pizza wheels are used to transport the paper, basically, along with the roller mechanism. So don't be surprised if you're using a very high-end paper. Unfortunately, you may end up with piece of wheel marks if you are printing very, very dark tones, okay? They usually end up showing up on high-density regions of your image. And we discuss head strikes. A head strike is when the printhead nozzle plate literally hits the paper on the edge. Usually the paper is emerging. This will be the leading edge. Printhead sitting over here, paper is advanced, and when it enters, it hits it. Why? Because that first inch is not really supported by the transport mechanism. If it's curling upward a little bit, even a few thousands of an inch, it will strike that head and it will smear it. Okay? That is why on Canon printers, when you're printing on high end papers using the fine art setting, it will impart a one inch border, literally just over one inch, 30 to 35 millimeters wide border, trailing edge and leading edge. Why? Because those two edges are not supported and will be very susceptible to head strikes. You gotta make sure your papers actually curl downward, okay, slightly downward. That way when it emerges, even though it is not supported, that edge is not going to be hit by the print hit, okay? That's very, very critical and something very important. Happens all the time to people. And the only way you're going to solve that is to make sure your paper is counter curl in the opposite direction or perfectly flat. Some papers are double coated. Well, that means I could print on both sides. Well, sure, technically you can, but they're double coated or dual coated so that Humidity does not cause a curl because both sides are coated with the same material. It will be basically neutral. High humidity, the paper will not curl. Low humidity, the paper will not curl. On regular single coated paper, high humidity, the paper will curl this way. The paper will curl in the opposite direction. Bingo, you get a head strike. Okay, so make sure that you keep your eye on the paper, put it on the flat surface and see if the edges or the leading edges are curling upward as well as the trailing edges. Double profiling. Mm. The biggest, biggest, biggest problem other than a monitor not being calibrated for causing really bad color reproduction. All that means is that you have told your application to use one of those ICC profiles we spoke of, and that immediately triggers a system where that profile takes over. It tells the printer how to mix the colors, but then you also told your driver to control color. It's a huge confusing situation. Both are trying to control color and the results will be dismal, okay? So make sure that if you tell Photoshop, Lightroom, or whatever you're using to print Q image, it doesn't really matter to control color and you're choosing a matching ICC profile that you have installed in your hard drive, then you tell the driver to not control color, okay? On a Canon printer, it will be color slash intensity manual adjustment, matching, and then pick none. 
that will prevent any double profiling from taking place because you have eliminated the printer from that. Oh, but what about the paper choice I just picked? Well, that will take into consideration the thickness of your paper, the ink density requirements for that particular coating that the paper is treated with, and also whether it should use matte black or photo black ink, okay? So the paper choice technically dictates the physical requirements for that paper, not necessarily a profile activation. Although, on the other hand, if you tell your application not to control color, and you tell the driver to control color, and you're using a Canon paper or an Epson paper, it has to be the same brand, and you choose Pro Luster, it will automatically link it to that Pro Luster ICC profile, okay? For that, you have to set your matching to either driver matching or ICM. Again, I have videos that cover all of those techniques, okay? So don't be afraid. Look in my color management playlist for any of these videos that appeal to you. I have many of them in there covering everything. So take a look at those. Color modes. Well, color modes you pick in your driver. A beginner, a raw beginner will be mistaken when they deal with this because they will usually not choose a very good color mode. On an Epson printer, that's Epson sRGB. Well, and then you have a choice of vivid or normal. Well, that reminds me of the automatic fix that the drugstore machines apply to your images. Yeah, it will give you a pleasant looking picture, but it won't match at all what you see on your monitor. Okay, because it's auto-correcting your image. So what you need to do in an Epson printer, on a Canon printer, if you want the printer to control color, the driver that is, to control color, and you're using a matched paper that is listed on that particular driver, ICM. That's the color mode you choose, okay? That will do an automatic link to that installed ICC profile for that Epson paper or that Canon paper, okay? Keep that in mind. So I think that's enough. I have a lot more, but I don't want to, you know, bore you to death with all of these ter terms. Just remember that when you're asking for help, don't say my colors are off. Because that could be dozens of different things. That could mean a lot of things. My yellow nozzle is, well, is that just one, 10, or the 365 nozzles? Say channel. Okay, things like that will help you get a quicker uh, solution for any problems that you may be experiencing because that will then eliminate the back and forth, back and forth, either emails or comment series, either on my Facebook group or on the comment section of my channel or any other channel that you may be dealing with. So keep that in mind. Learn those terms. Again, it's very simple. I will post the actual terminology on my description for this video and so you can go over them in your own time and then rehash by watching the video so thank you so much by the way i just had my second surgery on this side of the mouth i'm going to be requiring some bone grafts on my jaw yeah i have a congenital disease if you will that causes the calcium to be eroded or basically removed from the jaw so i have what would be osteoporosis of the jaw basically so they had to remove some teeth to be able to get at it and then carve out the bad areas fill them in with a temporary filler and now i'm going to be needing some bone grafts that's cadaver bone basically so that's coming up in about two months i'm able to speak I took a lot of Tylenol today to be able to do this tonight for you guys. So thank you so much. Don't forget to be with us this Sunday. We'll be back on a regular schedule for the live stream. Precision Colors owner will be here, and he's going to do something really, 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 really fun. So don't miss it. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And as always, happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.